Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, Fading Memories listeners. You know I'm always so appreciative of your time, and you're going to really enjoy today's episode. I have Jimmy Zolo from Joe and Bella. If you're not familiar with Joe and Bella, they are an adapting clothing company, and Jimmy's going to tell us all about how they got started, because that's an actually interesting story, and why adaptive clothing is so important for the older adults in our life. So thanks for joining me, Jimmy. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to uh, talk and, and share a bit about what we're working on. Yeah, it's wonderful. It'll be a kind of a nice update because I think in early 2020, sometime sometime during the pandemic, we did an Instagram <laughs> live. So it's probably somewhere on that platform. <laughs> right. This, right. This one will live. And it's funny. When we spoke last time, uh, we weren't making clothing and we weren't really thinking about making clothing, but... Uh, Things change pretty quickly after we spoke, which we'll get into. <laughs> well, awesome. So kind of tell us how, like, I mean, I've read the story. So you, your grandmother was having struggles, as many of our loved ones do. And you put her in, was it assisted living or memory care? That part I forgot. So so she was living in a, a memory care community. She was in a wheelchair, but um, was living with some cognitive decline. Uh, and she was there when the, the pandemic hit and, you know, like everybody else during the pandemic, that was, that was a really tough experience in the beginning because you didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know what to expect. Um, no one really knew anything. It was really scary. And we, you know, we were wondering if we should try and get her out. We were wondering if, well, what we could do to support the community. And that's when we started Joe and Bella and it wasn't meant to be an apparel or fashion brand at the time. It was when we spoke, we, uh, we created a place to make, uh, shopping for your loved one during the pandemic way easier so you didn't have to worry about them running out of essentials. And that was just meant to be kind of this side project during the pandemic. So loved ones want to have to worry about their family members in memory care running out of essentials. Um, but that changed a little bit after we spoke. Um, I was FaceTiming with my grandmother. And at the time, it was really the best way to communicate with her. We we tried calls that didn't really work. And um, we tried doing the talk through the window thing, which felt almost torturous to a degree. Uh, but FaceTime was the best of the options. And it also allowed us to have a bit different perspective on what her life was like at the memory care community. And it was during one of these calls when a caregiver was helping her to put on a sweater because my grandmother was cold and <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget it. It was the first time in my life I ever heard my grandmother swear. <laughs> she, uh, she, she, she dropped an F-bomb and it was, oh, uh, it was shocking. <laughs> I, uh, she, she was the most formal buttoned up woman I had ever met. The type who wore high heels and a dress every day, never had a hair out of place, would never swear. And, and so for her to do that, uh, you could tell she was in a, a, a whole lot of pain. And it was just from having to move her arm just slightly back to get in into the sleeve. And um, the care partner who was helping her to get dressed um, did everything right. She was patient and kind and gentle, but my grandmother's body just didn't move in that way anymore. Um, so I remember hanging up and uh, being really frustrated. And uh, I went online to find clothing for her that would make that process less painful. And, and I found a couple options. I ordered their top products, their top seller, sent it to my grandmother. And when they got to her, I gave her a call. And she said, no, I'm not going to wear that. And I said, why? She said, too ugly, <laughs> um, <laughs> which was very, very much in line who with uh, who she was. You know, there, there were days at that point where she didn't know who I was, um, but she still had that personal sense of her identity and and what she was comfortable wearing and, and, and how she wanted her clothing to make her feel. And um, that was when Joe and Bella really turned from being this side project during the pandemic to saying, hey, we can do something about this. So now we are out there 
uh, making and designing and coming up with new products that makes uh, dressing less painful and faster and easier for older adults, but um, focuses on fashion and make sure everything is modern and beautiful and uh, everything in between. Yeah, see, my mom was not ever really, she always cared about how she looked, but she wasn't really a fashion plate. And <laughs> as her Alzheimer's progressed, it just, it was like, she just didn't even have the awareness that, you know, those don't work together or, you know, you've worn that sweater four days in a row, that kind of, the typical thing. Um, but my paternal grandmother sounds like she was a lot like your, your grandmother. So, um, so tell us who Joe and Bella are, cause they are actual real people. They, they are actual real people who, um, were an inspiration for us. So, uh, not only did my grandmother live in a memory care community, my grandfather did as well. He had Parkinsonia dementia. And um, when we made the choice to, to to move him and my grandmother into memory care, it was something we had been planning. So we knew where they were going to move, but it also been something we had been putting off, which I think is typical. So for any listeners who have a loved one there, I'm sure you went through the same thing of is this the right time? Can we wait any longer? Is there any way we can keep them at home safely? And for us, despite having 24 seven in-home care for them, um, they weren't safe at home any longer. So um, we, when we made the move, it was so last minute that it was Christmas Eve of 2012. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I thought yeah, we were so bad. Was, yeah. So talk about a, uh, you know, added pressure. And, and and I remember it was a dark, dreary night in Chicago. It was cold and the, the community was empty. There was sort of a skeleton crew there working that night. And by the time we had finished getting the room set up, it was, you know, 830 at night. And um, <laughs> we, we I think we were sort of moping around at that point, feeling bad for ourselves and wondering, is this the right place for our grandparents? Are they going to be taken care of? Are they going to be with people that they want to be with? Sort of every doubt that you would have uh, um, when you make that move for a family member. And um, a nurse at the community was giving us a tour. And during the tour, two residents jumped in line with us and uh, they slowly started taking over the tour and um, did so in the most incredible way where they were lighthearted and joking and um, really made us feel at home. And that was Joe and Bella. And they uh, they ended up becoming part of our family come over for Mother's Day and Father's Day and Thanksgiving. And they ate every meal with my grandfather uh, until the day he passed. Um, uh, both Joe and Bella have since passed. Jo uh, Bella passed uh, recently in 2022. Um, but we named the company after them. And we, we did so for two reasons. The first is that moment, that feeling of um, relief when we met them. It, that they gave it to us was this like most incredible gift. And that's our ideal. And that's what we want to give back to people. Because I know when people come to Joe and Bella, our website, and they need, they, 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 they have a very specific need. They need to help their family mother, family member who's maybe their dementia or their Parkinson's or other age related changes has progressed more rapidly than they had expected. So they come to us saying, Oh my God, I need help. So we want to give back that same feeling, um, that Joe and Bella gifted to us. And the second is it, it does put a little bit of extra pressure on us in a way <laughs> in that um, these are very real people whose legacies um, um, we need to live up to. And for us giving anything and doing anything less than our best, any product that doesn't live up to their names and who they were um, just can't, um, happen. So it's a, it's a little bit of ad added extra pressure, but for, for people that we really deeply loved. See, I think that's such a cool story. And it points out that, you know, a memory care and assisted living community, they are not places you dump your loved ones because you don't want to deal with them anymore. Whatever negative thought processes people have, my mom always said, I don't want to be a burden to you girls. I want to live in my home. Not understanding that those were mutually exclusive. And my mom right. had friends that, the th well, the three of them. So it was three, di three different Dianes, as if that's not confusing enough. <laughs> the three of them would get into mischief. 
which was just fine with me. They never caused any trouble. It was always just like one day we had to put a new area rug in my mom's room and her and um, other Diane, as we referred to her, (laughs) they rolled it up and hid it in other Diane's room. Well, I have no idea why. I mean, it was just this weird, I mean, and they were just, they were always like the three musketeers. And I have another past guest. Um, He moved, he and his wife into, well, I know they're in an assisted living community. She has very advanced Alzheimer's Mm -hmm. and the caregivers and other residents and other people give to Kate is what he, they actually have pseudonyms online, which is kind of cool. Um, the socialization and the, the joy, cause she's like re- a really happy, like my mom got kind of mean, this gal is very happy. Um, and the people that have spent time with her, it's like, they're, they're benefiting. Kate's benefiting. Richard's right. benefiting. Everybody's benefiting. And they would not have had that. He recognized that the, the he, she was going to get to a point where he couldn't care for her anymore. They ended up caring for, I think, out of three out of four parents. So they've been, oh, wow. he's been down this road multiple times. And he was smart enough to know, you know, I'm not going to be able to to keep doing this in my 70s and 80s. And he had planned right. ahead for moving them into an assisted community. I'm assuming that they live on the assisted living side because he doesn't need memory care at all. Um, and it's just, he gets socialization, she gets socialization, they get socialization. It makes his caregiving of her easier. I know that there's caregivers that work with her. So, you know, it's one of my soapboxes that I stand on is like, you know, don't, don't dismiss memory care out of hand because, you know, you've heard horror stories. So I like to tell the uh, non-horror stories. (laughs) I, I, I'm a hundred percent with you. I think those horror stories, um, are outliers for this industry. I think the people involved in our senior housing in this country, um, they do so because they've been deeply impacted by the space themselves and they have such a deep love for it. I, I know for us personally, my grandmother lived in a Kelsch community and the staff there, they, they were part of our family. Um, when she passed, we we saw them all gather and cry. Um, they 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 cared so deeply for her and and you know there are so many other ama- amazing communities throughout the country like Priority Life and the Belmont Villages who just do things so incredibly well and hire amazing people and are innovating in some really interesting ways too. Belmont Village has a, an amazing program called Circle of Friends that um, is uh, all about. Um, education later in life, uh, particularly for those living with cognitive change. That's uh, incredible. So so, so access to those sort of programs are unique to, to the senior housing and senior living world. Um, I would say everyone's situation is unique, but I, I'm with you. I'm on your soap dot box right, right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my paternal grandmother had been mostly blind from glaucoma for like huh. my entire teenage adult years which, you know, I've just turned 56. She passed away when I was 54. So, you know, it's like, um, I think I can do math. Yeah, it'll be two years in April. Lord, time flies. And she was the same way. My paternal grandfather died at the end of 97. And in 2005, she fell and hit her face and damaged the eye that was good. And it, it, she took a real toll on my aunt, my, and that was the daughter-in-law. So I was shocked, like almost fell out of my chair shocked when I found out that my, from my aunt who'd spent like the better part of 25, 30 years taking care of her mother-in-law, that my grandmother actually liked it in the board of care home at the end. She lived there for less than a year and she really enjoyed it. She didn't like the food, which is kind of funny because she was never a great cook, but um, the people who ran it were Filipino, so they didn't prepare things in the Midwest way that my grandmother, my grandmother grew up in Iowa. So, you know, definitely a different cuisine than, than what these other people were making. And I mean, literally when I found this out this past Thanksgiving, I, I was, I literally was just speechless because one, I was like, I need, I need to have that recorded because she, my Nana is what we called her was like family does for family. She had money. She could have been in the Taj Mahal. 
She could have done whatever she wanted to do with her money. Her mind was fine. She couldn't see. And she was getting really super hard of hearing. But all of the struggles, and we're like so far off the, the, the adaptive clothing, but we'll get there. Um, yeah, we'll get back. All, all of the struggles of an, a seriously advanced older adult living alone in a single family home that was built in 1974 and you can't see things. It was just like, I mean, I loved the day that my, I can't remember if it was her or my aunt. I think it was, I can't remember. One of them called and basically said, um, we turned on the exhaust fan in the master bedroom and flames came out. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> you mm. know? Oh no. And I literally, when my aunt said, well, we're moving Nana from the hospital to this board and care home. I thought, Phew, I better, this was in 2020. My mom died at the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. And I thought, I, I got to, you know, do whatever I can to go see her. I mean, like, if I got to put a hefty bag over my head, I'm doing it because, you know, I didn't see my mom the last two weeks of her life. I saw her the day before she died because mm. the community we, we had her in was wonderful. And I don't really think, right. I mean, it was after the lockdown started, so I'm not really sure why they let us in, but I'm, I'm glad they did. <laughs> Uh, but I thought, right. oh, man, you know, this woman's going to be in a board and care home and hate it because it's not her home. And, right. you know, she'll be gone in a month. Well, she lasted like nine. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. And she loved it. There. I, was, I couldn't believe it when my aunt said that. So um, I do know that having adaptive clothing would have been really beneficial for my Nana because she basically ended up spending the last year in her, of her life living in um, pajama pants and multiple layers of cardigans. I guess she was always hmm. cold. I mean, she'd be wearing like two sweaters out on the deck in 90 degree weather. Oh, <laughs> like, I'd be, I'd, I actually brought a fan. I like it warm, but it'd be like, it gets a little, little warm out here. And she's wearing, <laughs> you know, pajama pants and cardigans. And I know she would not have liked the way she looked. She was particular about the way she looked more so than my mom. But like I said, Nana had her, she had her 90% of her cognitive ability or 95. It's hard to tell. Cause you, you literally had to like rest your chin on her shoulder and scream in her ear, hmm. which was never fun. <laughs> so tell us yeah. about adaptive clothing and why it's important for older adults. Since, you know, I plan on living to be 103 like she did. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Which means I have oh 47 more years to go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, you, you got a ways then. Uh, so, so, so yeah. adaptive clothing is, it's a broad term, but it's it, it really just means any piece of clothing that's altered to make dressing faster, safer, or easier. Um, for us specifically, we're, we're focusing on older adults who are living with changes related to cognition, to motor, or mobility, or range of motion, frankly. Um, because there are a lot of brands that are making great adaptive apparel, but they tend to focus on younger adults. They tend to focus on people between the ages of 15 and 50. And you know, as we age, our, our bodies change, our needs change, our skin changes. So when we think about our designs, um, we are designing with an older adult's body and needs and changing abilities uh, in mind. And um, we have our first two products now out in the market. One is uh, what we call our Care Zips, uh, which is an adaptive pair of pants. And our other one is called our Freedom Pant, which is a, another pair of adaptive pant. Uh, they're slightly different. The Care Zip is... Uh, it, it's uh, our top seller. It's got a patent for a three zipper design. So it has two zippers on the side and a third zipper sort of underneath. And what's so great about that is it allows for an incontinence product to be quickly and safely changed without someone's pants having to come all the way off. So about 80% of individuals who move on into a memory care community uh, who are living with dementia or Alzheimer's will, will become incontinent. So it's a, a really high percentage of individuals within those communities. And they need their incontinence products changed between eight and 12 times over the course of a day. Um, and that can take anywhere between 12 and 20 minutes, depending on the individuals. It is, it is tough. It is tough on the staff. It is tough on the residents, particularly now where everyone is under staff. So think about residents who are sort of sitting around waiting for, for help, waiting for staff to come to be able to assist them. And so our products are, are meant to cut that time by at, at least half and also do so in a way where 
it doesn't look like you're wearing uh, something you wouldn't want to wear. So we we designed the fit to be worn with an incontinence brief. So you can't tell that there's a brief under there. We, we made uh, the fabric super comfortable, but we also, even though it's kind of like a, a sweatpant type of fabric, it, it looks more like a khaki or a chino style fabric. Uh, so so it, it gives off that more sort of elevated impression. And we added things like pleats and a really sort of fine finish on a waistband that you wouldn't normally see in adaptive wear just to elevate it that that extra degree. So it's something people actually want to wear because it's it's one thing It's if it solves a problem. It's another thing if um, it solves a problem and people actually wear it and, and want to continue wearing it, um, which is which is the goal. Uh, but those are our first two products. And we actually have five more <laughs> that are coming out over the ne- course of the next four months. So we're, we're being pretty ambitious, but we've got uh, a chino for men, a dress pant coming out for women, uh, a men's button down coming out and a, uh, a women's long sleeve top coming out as well. So we've got a lot of in the works that we're, we're navigating that we're pretty excited about. Now, I know one consideration that you have to take in into with adaptive clothing is Velcro is not necessarily a great product to use because it can, you know, as we age, our skin gets thinner and Velcro is, you know, if you got a piece of Velcro, you know, rubbing against your skin, even if you're, you know, not an older adult, I guess you, I like it how you said they, the other companies focus on 15 to 50. It's like, oh, that puts me in the older adult category. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want that. But, you know, even still, you know, if you had something rubbing, ugh, it's not not at all pleasant. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that, yeah, I'm assuming yeah, with you- the zippers, there's um, like a, there's a way that like it's there, it's designed so that you can't zip somebody's skin into the zipper because that would be worse than Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so all of our zippers have a back facing on it. So, uh, it's never going to be a uh, skin to skin there or, or zipper to skin there, I guess. Um, uh, but I'm with you for, for any of the products we're going to have this year, which by the end of the year, between nine and 12 total, none of them will use Velcro. Velcro tends to be the primary closure device that, that all the other adaptive apparel brands use, but we we're, we're avoiding it for, for that exact reason, among others, we think it's specifically poorly designed for for those who live in in senior housing because often their their uh, their clothing is thrown in in larger industrial washes and that's where sort of Velcro really goes to get beat up and destroyed. And the other cha- challenge with Velcro is I think it just doesn't look as good as a zipper or a snap of some sorts because if you don't line it up just perfectly right, then the fit of the item, whether that's a shirt or a pants. Look, look, it, it is off, and that could also lead to gaps where someone's skin is exposed. So we're we're very anti Velcro when it comes to adaptive clothes. <laughs> now Velcro's got a lot of good 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 uses, but not not for that one. Have you looked into magnets? Because I like snaps are tricky because you either have to be able to get your hands around both sides, or you're pushing the snap up against their bodies, which is not really cool. Um, you have a, a young child and another one on the way. Probably before the baby new one will come out before this episode, I think. So that'll be interesting. Um, But I'm sure you've experienced the challenge of snaps with baby clothes. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about NeuroReserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure 
or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. The snaps are tough. They they really they really are. Um, especially for any anyone who's changed a baby in the middle of the night, it is torturous to to, to go in there at four a.m. You can barely see and realize there are twenty snaps that you have to do to get a onesie back on. It's the same thing for clothing when you get older. No one wants all of those snaps. Um, so we we are exploring magnets. Uh, three of our products will likely uh, have magnets that get released earlier, the, uh, early part of this year. Um, one of them is actually going to be using a, a combination, using magnetic snaps. Um, what I like about snaps is that it's it's ultra secure. Um, the challenge, of course, is is it's it's harder to do. So magnetic snaps is sort of like this nice merger. They're not very prevalent on the market. They're harder to find, and they tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, but we 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 felt like they're a nicer solution, a little bit more elegant solution for uh, for that very problem. Yeah, because I've seen. Well, I have a cycling jacket. It's actually two pieces, so it's like a vest with magnets in the collar area and then you have like your sleeves which for the ladies out there that are old enough to remember shrugs so the jackets that don't really have any length to them they're just arms and the backing part <laughs> that part magnetizes on and you it doesn't move once you get them together and it's not terribly challenging you know if you put the vest part on and then the sleeves on and just kind of give it a pat they usually line up pretty easily and it's it's nice. It's nice to have the two different options. You know, maybe you just like, maybe you just want your arms to stay warm, but you don't need a lot of warmth around your middle. And you just wear the shrug part because, you know, I can do that. I'm a girl. <laughs> I don't know how that would look with guys. And of course, it's photo reflective for, you know, the cars that might come up at you. But that's, that's, and I've, that's my familiarity with magnets, but I've also seen other um, adaptive clothing brands. Are some of them tout the use of those, and I'm like, okay, I don't, you know, I don't know how those work. Magnets work with people with like pacemakers and stuff. Right. I don't know that's, if that's a yeah. That's the that's the downfall for magnets is is, is uh, the the audience who has pacemakers um, uh, obviously can't wear something that has a magnet uh, or most likely depending on the strength of the magnet. Um, the other challenge is, you know, if it's going into a wash, it can get stuck in the wash quite easily, depending again on the strength of magnet. So it, the challenge with adaptive, there's, there's all, always upsides and downsides. I, I'm a big proponent of magnets for those that can use them because it just is so much faster. And, and it's, I think it's really, really safe, particularly when it comes to, uh, assisted dressing. So if you have, a nurse or a care partner who's helping somebody else get dressed instead of instead of really trying to get every single button to go through on a button up it just takes 2 seconds to 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 magnetize on up somebody's shirt it's it it is so so nice and and the other advantage is for those individuals who maybe are a little bit earlier in their aging journey um it allows them to extend their independence um um because they can now let's say you know, you just have a uh, significant arthritis, uh, um, or, or your hand dexterity has, has changed and buttons just aren't an option for you. This gives you the ability to, instead of having you own a sweatpants, you can now wear, wear jeans or khakis again, like you always used to, because the, the button and the fly are magnetized. Um, and it allows you to do that with one hand really quickly. So it gives people their independence back. So I, I really love those as options. I think I'd prefer magnetic button jeans now. <laughs> I would think right, they would I'm press not. into your, yeah, well, my biggest problem with um, a button on jeans is that when I'm sitting, they jab into my stomach because parts of me are too round, <clears throat> but that's okay. Um, I was going to ask a question and it just, well, I'll go on to the next one. So who's designing these, these, cl the clothing for you? Are you guys doing that or? So, so we, we now have two different, um, sort of sources of design. Uh, the main one who is responsible right now for 100% of our designs, her name is Kara Sumpton. Uh, she's she's fantastic. Kara is 
um, a designer by trade. She was on the startup team for Lululemon way back in the day. And then she designed the launch line for Figs uh, for a brand out of Chicago called Public Rec that makes just really cool modern apparel. And uh, now she's working with us and Joe and Bella. And Kara was very in demand. <laughs> and uh, um, we were fortunate just to get a call with Kara, frankly. <laughs> um, but um, we didn't think she was going to take the job. We didn't think that we were going to be fortunate enough to have Kara designing our apparel because she is really well known. But what happened was the day before Kara's call, it was her grandmother's 95th birthday. And um, she bought her grandmother a cardigan that, the gra that her grandmother couldn't put on by herself. And, you know, I'm not necessarily one to uh, uh, say things happen for a reason, but the timing of that was 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 pretty amazing. And it, had it that not happened, I don't think Kara would have ended up working with us. And uh, Kara has since gone on to say that working on Joe Embellish products is the most important uh, work for her life. It's also, I think, in many ways for her, the most frustrating and the most challenging because of how hard uh, it is to make this right, because everything has to be right for the product to work. The, the it's It always starts with the fabric with Kara, but then it has to be the fit. It has to be uh, the different closure types. It has to be um, you know, making sure a zipper has a back facing and then the zipper pull is extra long and it could also be hidden, but, uh, for people who don't know where it is, but easy to find for the people that need to find it. It's, it's, it's got to going back to your point about the magnets. We got to make sure we're not creating any pressure points at all, particularly for people that are, uh, in wheelchairs or maybe are, are in a bed or sitting down for the majority of the day, because that could be, um, 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 a, a danger risk or a health risk. So there are all of these unique challenges that I know, um, Kara uh, and her team have had to navigate, and we're just so grateful for, for their work and their diligence with that. Um, the other is um, unique. So this past semester, we partnered with Columbia's Fashion School of Design here in Chicago. Um, we met a professor uh, out there. Her name is Reyes, who uh, used to be a product lead at Disney. And she uh, happened to be teaching a class on adaptive apparel with uh, some incredible students. And we connected with Reyes. And um, for the last semester, her students broke up into teams and created product designs uh, for Joe and Bella. And uh, every, I think, three to four weeks, we would zoom on in with them or go into their class and give them feedback and direction. And at the end, uh, they had three... Um, pretty amazing designs that were unlike anything that's existed in the market before and were really clever. And what I, what I love most about this was we, we, we found a bunch of 18, 19 and 20 year olds who were so removed from the challenge and that we are trying to solve for that they were able to look at it from a very different lens. And, uh, it's going to be a, a we're, we're going to go ahead and partner with Columbia College and in, in Reyes and her class again this upcoming semester, and I believe we're going to try and even manufacture one of the the final designs that came out of this past past class. So um, it's been an amazing experience, um, and uh, we've learned a lot from it, which is which is great, and I, I hope they have too. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds like an excellent partnership. And I when you said that they were so far removed from the the problem that you're trying to solve, you know, my mind immediately went to, you know, that they're, they're learning what, you know, like what the other half is living. I didn't even expect you to say that they looked at it through a different lens, which that just has me super curious now. <laughs> it's like, I would love to know what they're, so what is it that they've come up with that seems unique and unexpected because of their their age or lack thereof. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, so one of the designs that I'll call out with that was just so clever was a different version of pants. So for, for Joe and Bella, we have the side zippers and a third zipper underneath. Um, they created a four zipper system that allows for the wearer to only open the pants in the front or the back or all the way. 
And it hadn't ever been done before by anybody else, because if you have four zippers all attached to waistband, um, that's not only is that a lot of weight, but if they're all open, the, some, the pants would just totally drop. Um, but they were able to figure out a way in which they sew the pants together that it created this sort of unique pressure system on the waistband itself that allowed the waistband to stay up despite it essentially not being attached to itself. Um, I'm not describing that very well, but it was really, really smart and really clever and nothing like that had been designed before. Um, so that, that was one of them that we just absolutely loved. Um, another group, uh, came up with a, a, a really cool variation of a, of a woman's shawl. Um, typically with, uh, adaptive tops, the challenge are, are the sleeves. And they, the reaction to that was, well, that just make a, a top that doesn't have any sleeves. Um, so they, they solved that problem in, in an obvious way that, that most in the market have, have also ignored. Um, they, they're, they're, they're really great about thinking outside the box and sort of pushing the boundaries of what's been accepted before in, when it comes to adaptive. See, that's awesome. My husband was, um, always big on we're, we're Rotarians and he was, he ran for city council, but he was a planning commissioner for 10 years. And one of his platforms running for city council was, you know, we need to connect the high schools with um, apprentice programs because not everybody is college material. Not everybody can afford college these days. And we have a friend that owns a Ford dealership in our old hometown. And those mechanics, man, they make some serious money, like really, really good money. And he had a heck of a time finding mechanics, period, not just good qualified ones. Because you know, it's, you know, these days, like I have a hybrid and I think it's got seven or nine computers in my, my little Honda Accord. I'm like, that's insane. I went from a, a 1999 Civic, which had zero computers, I think, um, to, you know, this hybrid that's all super techie. And it's the first Honda that had its, that we bought the extended warranty for, you know, so it's just, it's, it's such a necessary thing to part, you know, to, to be able to partner with people who can think outside the box and and come up with new ideas. Um, I know one of the challenges with, well, not necessarily especially men, but men whose caregivers, like in a com memory community, are women. Like, if you have to use the toilet for things other than what men stand up for, they don't want some woman down there right. on their knees pulling their pants down, and or that might give them the wrong idea. So... Being able to keep the front covered is beneficial for a lot of reasons. <laughs> and I've seen right. stuff and like that, but not with four zippers. That sounds that sounds like an engineering yeah, really marvel. Clever. It it really is. We were we were amazed and 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 for them it was this challenge that they knew they wanted to go this direction and it took them the entire semester. I think it took them till two days, days before the semester was over, before they had this aha moment of, wait a second, this is how it could work. Um, and and, and uh, part of how they were able to solve it is, you know, college students um, are using the latest and greatest tech and they were using a 3D modeling tool of the, you know, it just, just sort of blew, blew us away that allowed them to solve that. Um, but I agree with you. And, and, and we're trying to, not only when it comes to the design of our apparel, but the type of other companies that we work with, totally think outside the box and push the boundaries of how do we um, improve the experience on our site? How do we uh, improve the process of getting our products to the people that most need them um, and learn from this experience with Columbia College and others? Because it's been it's been pretty inspirational for us. Well, if you need another school to partner with, my daughter went to the Academy of Art in San Francisco, and they have a uh -huh. huge fashion department. Um, Raven Simone from the Cosby Show, now I'm really showing my age, she actually <laughs> attended. For those who are, <clears throat> excuse me, for those who are younger, Raven Simone was also in, she was the star of That's So Raven. That was a 90s show. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a it's a pretty interesting option. You know, and then it give you give you an opportunity to go to San Francisco, which is a really right now it's a little got a little a little waterlogged and some damage from these <laughs> storms we've had. But other than that, it's a pretty unique town to visit. 
So yeah, that's it's, it's, there's it's an option. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I've no, being, being in Chicago, most that most of the winter, we're 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 always looking for an excuse to to get away from the snow. <laughs> I was in Chicago in July, so July 2022. Nice. Gorgeous town, and being in California, we don't have very many buildings in made out of brick because brick doesn't <laughs> hold up too well with earthquakes. So I was yep. just like, I so appreciated the architecture because it was a hundred percent different than what we have here. And it was, it was gorgeous. I should have spent one more day there. I'm like, why did I fly home Sunday when I could have flown home Monday? But that was okay. I was there to see um, Mrs. Kelly's Journey Home. It's a play. Um, I think this gal, the um, Brita Miller lives in, she's in Minnesota or Wisconsin, one of those equally freezing cold states. And <laughs> it's a story about her mom who was an Irish immigrant and the end of her mom's life, she had dementia. So it's a really beautiful one woman play that Brita puts on. Oh. Um, and we were at Captain or was it Captain O'Neill's or is that the right name? Something O'Neill's. Pretty sure it was Captain O'Neill's. That doesn't sound right though. Anyway, a nice restaurant. O'Neill's on Wells, which is a, a great restaurant. Yeah, no, great this one was. Yeah, that this was a bar restaurant too, but I don't think that's what it was called. But anyway, um, I was gonna. Well, one other thing about San Francisco: coming in the winter would be much better than July. San Francisco July is really cold. <laughs> the best times to, to see San Francisco would be about October. Okay. I well, went to San Francisco I'll, I'll, I'll State. Sure. Yeah, no, I don't know why. Yeah. Other than well, we have very very hot inland weather that combines with the fog in the, in the ocean, you know, zones. And yeah, San Francisco in the summer generally runs about 60 degrees. And you can always kind of laugh at the tourists that are there in shorts and tank tops, turning all shades of blue and buying the <laughs> overpriced touristy sweatshirts. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's a very interesting town. Just part of it's just that the weather is really strange too. <laughs> Right. I was going to ask one quick question. Have they adapt, adapted baby, baby clothing? Blah. You were saying how hard it is to snap onesies in the middle of the night. My daughter's 31, and I still remember those challenges. Haven't they improved <laughs> baby clothes yet? They have. Um, there's a fantastic brand, I believe, called um, – I really hope I'm not going to butcher this. I believe they're called Magna Me. So Magna as in magnetic, me. And they make uh, – really great magnetic baby onesies and other sort of baby items. Um, they are uh, really clever. They have a bunch of patents out for how they've designed it. And then going back to our the conversation earlier about, hey, being a parent changing your child in the middle of the night, oh my goodness, are they uh, are they a godsend? It is, it is a fantastic product and uh yeah, uh, big big fans of them. I'm I'm sure there are others, but they're they're the one who uh, um, uh, we 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 know the best. Awesome. Because so when we were talking about that, I'm like, okay, I know like so some stuff is slow to change, but like, come on, you know. <laughs> but it's it's, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the I think the baby market um, tends to get a lot of investment. Um, it tends to to despite being smaller and on a per capita basis growing significantly slower, uh, in, in fact, declining in most cases relative to the growth rate of the older adult market in this country, uh, the amount of investment when it comes to consumer products is is disproportionately going to products for babies and for for, for kids as opposed to older adults. Um so we definitely take a lot of inspiration from from brands like that who have who have really figured out and innovated there. But of course, you know um, what works there isn't always going to work for 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 our market. Um, but but we can definitely learn and and, and try and uh, um, take inspiration from their direction. Well, in the f almost five years I've been doing this podcast, we've gone from almost no adaptive clothing to a lot more options. So it'll be interesting to see how the next 47 years of my life plays out. <laughs> I hope I don't need adaptive clothing, but if I do, you know, I know where to go. I'll have to make sure the hubby knows where to go or the daughter might be a better option. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested in those magnetic button 
jeans so that when I'm sitting at the computer doing my little Zoom calls, I'm not getting jabbed with a metal button. <laughs> this has been yeah, they're, awesome. They're fantastic. Sorry. Well, We're having a little bit of... Sorry. We're having a little bit of Zoom lag, so that's okay. Um, but yes, thank you. This is... I I knew when we talked back in 2020, and I can't remember what month it was, I was like, I'm pretty sure they weren't doing adaptive clothing. So it's interesting to see how you guys have evolved. Yeah, it's been a it's been a big change. Um, we are awfully excited, and we've been so fortunate to meet folks like you in the space who are just incredible advocates for for startups and new ideas and innovations, and just advocates for hey, we we can take care of older adults in this country better and and for putting those folks uh like the senior housing who are, are doing it the right way uh shining a spotlight on that and, and advocating for, for 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 those um uh that are making a positive change so thank you so much um for for anyone who's interested in learning more please feel free to to check us out joeandbella.com you can ping me on twitter or linkedin any or or email whatever is easy as well if you have ever any questions or if there's any ideas that come to mind after listening to this but um uh jennifer i really appreciate you having me on thank you well look forward to seeing some more innovative designs made by i guess those are gen zers aren't they oh lord <laughs> <laughs> oh now i feel old thank you so much jimmy <laughs> and best of luck to you with the new baby and the new clothing Thank you. I appreciate it. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.